Okay, good morning guys. Well here we are. Um, I'm at Twyford Farm today. Now this is the first match in about three weeks. Uh, I gotta apologize for people who've been following me. The reason I haven't done any vlogs is the fact that um, uh, the missus from Thailand and the babies come over and I've had to spend the, the first few weeks sort of sorting them out, you know, showing them around and so on. Um, they were gonna come today fishing but it was forecast a bit of rain uh, so I didn't want to drag them up here. Um, you know, it's a wet like. So anyway, so uh, we're all starting to gather here now. Um, now the story goes right. This is um, a switch venue. It was uh, supposed to be on the Avon, the Bristol Avon, at, at Bath at Newbridge, which is one of my favourite venues. And I, I got a little meta there. I've missed out a few times there. Hello, Dave. And uh, anyway, basically. Um, they switched the venue because of the amount of boats on it uh, moored up and they, they couldn't actually get them, you know, um, well they couldn't get enough pegs on it. So they switched at the last minute and they've come to Twyford on the Warwickshire Raven. So that's interesting. Um, now Twyford, uh, they reopened it last year. Uh, the first match fished his head off and after that it's everyone struggled. Now it's been a year since and I think the venue's probably settled down a bit. Uh, however, uh, knowing Twyford, like I do, um, you need to draw around the islands, the first 20 pegs, obviously. Um, that's where the weights are, the big weights. Um, then, the other two sections could be reasonably fair, although there are, you know, some hot spots in those two sections, you know, at the top end and in the middle. So anyway, that's my uh, synopsis. So anyway, I'll leave it at that now. I'm just going to go in and register and um, obviously we do the draw and uh, let's see where they've drawn. Let's, let's see what we get on today. A bit rusty, but <laughs> we'll try our best. Okay, they're doing the draw inside Howard's uh, shop here. Yeah? Uh, paying in the money first. Shops come on really well now, well stocked. I sort you back. I've sorted it. I sorted it. Unless you've done me special casters somewhere. No. <laughs> I tell you what, this week in this heat, it's been lucky to have any caster. <laughs> Clive, where are you? Clive Branson, 25. Clive. Thank you, Howard. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Done. Okay, all gathering now, waiting for the draw. Okay, Mark. Yeah, cheers, mate. Okay, well, we're still waiting for the draw. Um, the weather, as I said, was dry, and now I feel a bit of uh, damp in the air. It's starting to come down a bit. Uh, I don't think there's quite a full turn up. There's not the 60 anglers here. So I think they're debating whether they're going to have three uh, qualifiers or not. Um, so we'll see anyway. Still waiting for the draw. Uh, should be in a minute, I think. We're just waiting for the last one or two stragglers. Um, right, just to give you an, a rough idea what to expect today. Um, the island pegs, which will be like 1 to 20, they're, they're going to be the favourites for the winners, for the framers. Uh, but there's only one person can qualify from that zone. My guess is it will be, I don't know, anywhere between 7 and 13 maybe. Um, they seem to be, that's where the bream uh, uh, held up. In the middle section, uh, there's going to be one or two flyers there. It's peg 28, where there's a big tree in the water, and it's renowned for chub. So that will be the one to draw in the middle section. And up the top end, it will be the top pegs. Um, usually peg 1 to 3. And then sometimes uh, maybe peg 7 or 9 can produce the art of um, there's the odd bream throughout, I think. Uh, last time I fished here last year, there was an odd bream um, caught. You probably will need double figures to qualify from each of the zones. So, anyway, that's my synopsis, as I said before. Um, 
Right. Well, that can do any filming today because of this uh, wind and the rain, we'll see. We'll see, it is starting to drizzle now, so um, fingers crossed I'll, I should be able to do a little bit of uh, filming. Otherwise, um, see you at the end. Okay. Seven people fishing today. Oh, okay. So, we still, you've still got three qualifiers. Um, zone, we've got zone one, which is peg one to 12 on the island. Okay, now you've got to be careful um, on the island. You can, if you want to, drive onto it. However, it's very boggy. And if you do, it's at your own risk. And you, if you drive onto the island, you've got to stay on the extreme left-hand side. Otherwise, you will get stuck. Okay, because there's a broken pipe on there. Um, Mark, can you just pass me that, those um, sheets I've just done, mate, please? I don't, my mum might see I'm smoking. <laughs> she watches vlogs. <laughs> Get me on there, Clive, so I can watch myself on your blog. Yeah, okay, say hello. Hello. <laughs> Right, at least this time when I watch his blog, I'll recognise him. <laughs> That's zone one. Zone two, qualifying zone two, is pegs 13 to 24. Zone three is quali uh, qualifying zone three is pegs 25 to 38. I've done um, six peg sections paying 50 pounds on um, one two three four five yeah so we've got four sections of six uh, five sections of six paying uh, 50 pounds one section of seven paying 60 pounds and these are default sections i'm paying the top four um 130 pounds for winning down to 70 or 80 i think it was for the um um, <laughs> the, um, fourth. Fourth, sorry. <laughs> now, anybody that's um, not on the island, you cannot park behind your peg. You park in one of the parking bays. We've worked extensively on clearing every single peg. Now, it's, it's quite breezy. Some of what we did yesterday, we're on a boat for seven hours. Some of the reeds may have blown into your peg. It's all loose, just push it away. Every single peg you're fishing is clear. Um, I've also put pegs in where you won't need a platform unless you draw 20, 28, 29, 28 and 29 and 30 may need a platform, 28 and 29 will, um, let's see, 32, 33, 34, 37 and 38 may need a platform. I haven't put the high bank in because some old people have drawn it before don't like to walk. Mark, do they? So, so the high bank isn't in. Those of you that haven't been... Oh, in Robinson, shut it! Those of you that draw 32 to 38, it's at the bottom of the hill to your left. And you see there's a car park about 100 yards up there. Just park in there. Nobody's got a long walk. Anybody from 31 going the other way is to the down the bottom of the hill to the right. If you draw 1 to 12, I'm going to get somebody to go down and wait. It's, it, you'll go down and to get onto the island in convoy. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll see who that is. Um, but please, if you draw 1 to 12, if you'll wait here then I'll make sure you all get down at the right place. I'll guide you through it. Okay, we're coming to the draw now. Um, but the, not, probably not many left. Here we go. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> oh, it's inside, is it? Oh. <laughs> oh, you've drawn that one. Well done. And they got 21. Mm. It's snaggy there, then. Where is that exactly then? That's um, 
Oh, that's to the as you go down, turn right, isn't it? And it's yeah. How far above the island is that? Probably two pegs, I think. Isn't it? Two pegs. Oh, nine. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Drone twenty one. Um, I'm not sure. They say it's a bit peggy. I'm gonna trouble is my sections from thirteen, which is a good peg, up to twenty eight. So um, let's have a look. Okay. I'll see you. See you down on the peg. Okay, arrived to my peg, peg 21. Just double check. And I paid the peg. Um, right, this is basically when it was last match. I was next peg up and uh, I weighed a pound odd. I think he's had one eleven off of this one. In fact, all the way along these few pegs, just a couple of pounds was caught. Um, the best weight, uh, I was saying to Paul Passmore in the queue, that peg 28 is the one <laughs> and sod's law he drew it um so he should do well up there but then saying that peg 13 is also in which is just above the island and that's uh, also another good peg um but you never know bream move you know fish move they could be here and they could be not you know a few bleak on the top um anyway let's enjoy the day's fishing let's, let's see what happens Okay, well I'm uh, set up now, ready, ready to go. Just coming down to see uh, the angler below me. What's your name? Darrow. Darrow, where are you from, Darrow? Somerset. Somerset, what part? Somerton. Oh, Somerton, I know, yeah. Oh, it's a pity about the unspill. I used to fish the unspill all the time. You ever fish the unspill now or not? No, I don't. Uh, no, no, no. no just and this is this good lady there. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you camera shy? You are? Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, um, so, is it, have you fished here before? No. No, no, so it's your first time here, okay. What does this resemble to any venue near you, anywhere? Uh, yeah, the parrot. The parrot, yeah. 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 I remember years ago fishing the parrot uh, in, in a South Wales, Southwest uh, sort of knockout competition. And, um, yeah, it's, it's shallower though, I think, the parrot than yeah. this, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but it's about the same width in some places, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, you never know. You know, use the same methods, techniques, might work. But as I say, Dave Adol, the one below you, is on the peg that um, Hadrian won off last year. Really? Yeah. What weight did he have? Like he had a big, yeah, yeah, thirty yard, thirty yard pound. So yeah, you know. So we are against it, unfortunately. So never mind. Right. Anyway, all the best. Uh, okay. <laughs> and you. Uh, right. We got about twenty minutes to go, I think. So just. Uh, just saying hello to him, because um, we're pretty close pegging really, but there you are. Um, as I say, with the river fest, they do come from all over the country and, uh, you know, to fish these, and they, some of them travel all over. Me, I just stick to the odd local ones, you know, as it says, a shame I wasn't on the event today, because that would have suited me, the waggler and then the feeder. Here, I'm going to try something different. Um, I know when I was here last time, we, we struggled, you know, with the ground bay feeder, all open to catch the odd fish, but didn't work. I'm going to fish the hemp and maggot today, which um, uh, it it don't seem to work uh, on the lower stretch at the um, at Evesham, which is below this. And uh, I did get it to work once. Um, I'm, and you know, if there's roach around, uh, they'll have a go at it. So what I do is, is fish a um, pinch of maggots over over a pouch of hemp. So I'll try that, and if that fails, I'll put the feeder down, uh, over the same line uh, and across um, it looks like a good wag the line there opposite so so I got a waggler set up feeder pole and a big stick and that'll, that's what that'll do so far touch wood it's not raining it's uh, keeping it off uh, this wind is keeping it up off the uh, office at the moment so we'll just see how it goes uh, boats of course uh, we always got to contend with them, but uh, thankfully there's not so many on this stretch. Uh, but it is Sod's Law because apparently um, I've spoken to Ben, uh, who was organising it uh, on the Bristol Haven, 
and he said yesterday you couldn't, you couldn't put any pegs in but today they've all shifted they've all been moved by the uh, water police so we could have fished it after all but never mind it's, uh, it was too much of a gamble he said so we've, we've all ended up at Twyford here and there's a match here next week as well so you never know I might put my nade down again let's see what the weights are like today as I said uh, I think the, the main weights are going to be on the island Dave Allen got a good chance an outside chance there but he was talking about fishing a waggler now um, I know that's not the method to uh, to catch bream you know he needs to put ground weight in and fish a feeder really but I'm not going to tell him <laughs> not this uh, stage of the game <laughs> at the beginning of course everyone fishes uh, their swims differently don't they you know um, I know uh, Mac McGuinness he's just gone up above me he's he, I know he'll fish the feeder all match so if there's bream around he'll catch him uh, another boat that's what we go don't get too many of them bloody things <laughs> anyway okay I'll see you in a bit then when the match starts and uh, as I say, we'll see what happens. Um, just enjoy myself, and it's nice to be back fishing. As I said, it's been a few weeks since I've been, uh, you know, fished a match, made any vlogs, so this is uh, the first one. And um, nice to be back. <laughs> okay, see you in a bit. <clears throat> okay, we're about to start. Um, now, I'm going to fish um, 13 metres on the pole. And uh, what I'll probably do is start off on the stick and then go switch to the pole end for the lighter presentation. The idea of fishing the stick is so that I can actually get start feeding on a regular basis. Now, I might also uh, go across with a waggler just to see if there's the odd small puppy or um, odd fish across, which is always a good idea, you know, to begin with. Um, I know it's a bit negative because it's, if I was fishing for a team or something, then obviously I'd be looking to scratch. But um, as I say, I'm going to actually uh, go for it a little bit. Uh, in the sense, I'll be putting uh, quite a bit of bait in. Because I've got nothing to lose today. Just enjoy the day's fishing. Um, and then fading all that, I'll be putting the feeder either across or over the hemp line, you know, which I've been... Uh, which I will be feeding. So just bear with me for the first um, 20 minutes, half hour. Uh, there's no action. Um, I'll just turn the camera off and then hopefully turn it back on when uh, when there is a bit of action. But we'll see. We'll see. I haven't seen a fish move yet. Uh, the guy below me said he's seen a roach. Top, but I haven't. Uh, nope, nothing at all. So we're doing this a good, good, uh, good thing or a bad thing. Right, that's it. I think it started. Okay. Okay, so a few maggots across. I'll start putting the hemp in. And a maggot on 13 meters. I'm just going to go through just to make sure I've got my um, bearings right. It's about um, seven, eight foot. Nice depth, you know. Start off with a single maggot. Very steady pace there today. It's a bit of movement. Ooh, fish straight away. <laughs> the roach. Oop. Like a bat of soap.
Yeah, I'm not going to probably get anywhere with that, but... <laughs> It's nice to be do some fishing. Yeah, so I put a pouch of hemp in and uh, a dozen or so maggots over it. A nice upstream wind at the moment, so it's giving me a nice presentation then. That tree. <laughs> right, the roach. Perch. Perch this time. I'm on a, an 18 hook. It's um, one of the comic, you know, white gape. Um, nuclear, nuclear hooks. Oh, bite. Ooh. I wonder if they are feeding on the hemp. I'll persevere with the maggots to begin with. Taking it down. I'll come with the score again. I was going to fish the stick, but <laughs> this seems to be a better presentation. So... Ooh, getting bites here. Huh? Oh, Put a couple of maggots across as well. Oh, another fish here. Oh, well. Oh, 
Oh, it is. Mm. So a little bit of a aquarium going on, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm using a pencil float. I've got a gram, but the shots and um, a, you know the sort of uh, shirt button style. So poacher, poacher hemp. The pinch of maggots. Oh, well, there we go. Oh, it's come off. You know, it's slightly bigger. Mind you, they all say the ones you lose always seem a bit bigger, don't they? <laughs> Bloody maggot come over on the hook then. And that is a problem with white gapes. That does happen, white gape hooks. All right, let's hope that haven't spooked them. Good days. Yes, I remember years ago fishing, uh, fishing Twyford, and days were a very common fish. You know, we used to catch quite a few days. So what I'm doing, laying it upstream so it's all coming down together. Ooh, yeah, bites. Probably small fish because I move, I missed that one. Unless a shot bite, you never know. Oh, I tell you what, I just seen a bream come up over there. I just seen a bream, the first bream I seen. Well, well, well. I know a quandary now. Do I go for the bream? Or what? It's the first time I've gone down without a bite there. All right, okay.
Mm, missing bites you now. I said, I'm in a bit of a quandary now because I've just seen that um, bream come up. I'm just uh, loose feeding maggots over there at the moment. I'm getting these fish there, I don't know. No, I bet there's people watching this saying, go for the bream. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Thing is, I remember having a, a bag of uh, bream doing exactly what I'm doing now with a hemp and the maggot. I had 133 pound of them once. So I know Bream are attracted to the hemp. Probably more for ground bait though. Days. That's the beauty of fishing, isn't it? You know, you just don't know what to do uh, sometimes for the best. You know, just um, as I said, I'm just enjoying myself at the moment. <laughs> I didn't expect the fish to uh, respond so quickly to this hemp. It usually takes about 20 minutes, but uh, they come straight onto it. As I said, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. Yeah, my guess is this is just a quick spurt. I didn't really expect them to last. Oh, damn. Watch that tree there. Bite going down, and I got a feeling it was a bleak. Let me just check that bait. No, no, didn't touch the maggot. Might have been a shot bite.
Back to the road. Good. Did I wake you up then? <laughs> On the camera.
Well, it's just typical of the Avon. You catch, you know, you catch a start and then it goes off a bit. So. Right, I'm going to go on the stick a minute because um, just in case the fish are further down than the pole line. side cast Bit of a snag. <laughs> Further down than the uh, 
in the pole. Drop down. Dice. <laughs> Perch. A couple of small fish, you know. Positive start. Eh? Positive start, half eleven. Yes, yeah, half eleven, yeah.
and a small pick. Right, gonna have a little chuck on the wagon in a minute. It's way downstream, eh? Pitch. Right. Just gonna let that settle on that line a minute. Let's just go quickly across the waggler. Double maggot. Are you smaller now? Or has it got? Yeah, small little chublet. I guess so, a little little chublet. Hmm. Yeah, there's another little chublet and this maggot maggots have gone over the hook. Trouble is I'm on a big hook here, so I might have to go smaller. Only bits, you know. Only bits. Anyone catch it or? Dave's had two. Huh? Dave's had two skimmers and a perch. Has he? Yeah. And the feeder? Yeah. Yeah. 
you know what I love most about watching you lot fishing? You've got a world champion with his bait in the celebrations tin. Yes. In the first couple of minutes I watched Dave Barrel who put his feeder in a tree. Oh. I feel so much better. <laughs> I know. I, I know I have, I have um, a lot of comments about my <laughs> celebrations. If it works. Balance. You know, it's a nice, they're nice sizes for me to... Yeah, put your hand in on yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, getting small fish like, you know, yeah. but uh, See what you mean by small fish. <laughs> spread it all across the river on purpose fine. I got two sims going. Okay. Yeah, maggots across and hemp and maggot inside, you know. And you go over the yeah. hemp line on the pole. Yeah. Plenty of small fish there. He's chucking a feeder next to you as well. Have they, have they had any below me? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He's chucking a feeder. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, to be honest, I should be doing that because that's that's how the only way we're going to get away, you know. To win it, it well. yeah, I'm doing I'm doing it. I'll have a go in a minute after, like, you know.
this. Well, there seems to be plenty of fish here at the moment, so small fish. Trublet.
change the look. Going down to a, a 20. There's a couple of skimmers caught already, so I'm probably behind in weight already, but there we are, just uh, plenty of time.
Okay, I'm going to come off this now. We'll just have a quick go on the uh, on the pole again, and then I'll be look at the at the uh, feeder because uh, there's only chance of uh, getting a weight, you know. Okay, well it's uh, quite off a bit now, so I'm going to um, turn the camera off. I'm going to have a little go on the feeder, and I'll let you know what happens. Thank you. With the boat coming. Okay, well I've given it 15-20 uh, minutes now on the feeder. Um, uh, I haven't had a bite on it yet. Give another few minutes and then if not, I'll go back on the waggler.
a bit like watching paint dry. If if the fish if the fish are not in front of you, you know, on the feeder, then uh, there's not much you can do about it, really. I mean, if you had your line there or something, then you had you know you got something in the swim. But when nothing happens at all, basically you're flogging a dead horse, I think. Worst thing uh, was seeing that um, that bream come up. You know, I think it was a bream anyway. <laughs> it had like a brown back to it. But, uh, I don't think anyone's caught around me yet. yet. Let's go on the wag there again. It's always worth a chuck though, you never know, do you? Tablets. Oh, it's a roach. Small roach.
Roach. <laughs> Fish, yeah. oh. <laughs> Biggest fish yet.
Okay, I'll crack on then because, <clears throat> as I say, it's um, it's not going mad at the moment. <clears throat> If anything starts, I'll come back to you. <clears throat> okay, well, uh, um, just to let you know, I just lost a big fish on the on the pole. Um, and the story kept up and down the bank is that um, six or seven pound is winning the zone. So, uh, as I say, I've only got maybe a couple of pound, a pound and a half, two, so... All to play for, you know, another hour and a half to go, two hours. On route.
Okay, the match is over. <laughs> so, welcome back to uh, match fishing. It's a reality. <laughs> you either draw on them or you don't. Um, I've, I've enjoyed it. I've had a few little fish and that. Uh, as I say, I've lost the big fish. Who knows what it was? Could have been a pike. Could have been a chub. Could have even been a barrel because it was a big. It was a big fish. But it, it took me right in the snag. Somebody said it was snag. He pegged it. So uh, anyway. Um, I weigh in anyway, uh, I think there's five pound or more, two pegs below me, I'm not sure about me, you never know, small sections and there's six sections of five or six, so I weigh in anyway, okay. Okay, well Dave Avalos just weighed in four pound odd, so he'll win this uh, mini section, but there's a uh, 12 pound, a couple of nines, a couple of sevens, um, unfortunately all down on the, the island pegs. Well, he hasn't bothered away you next to me on the right, and I don't think he's bothering above me, so yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> just short of two pounds, 150. Um, yeah, so, well, he didn't weigh below me, he didn't weigh above me, and Dave Allo just weighed in. So he's won the little mini zone, a little section here, but obviously no good in the match. So there we are. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully you can see me again now next week on another venue. Okay, bye for now.